Thank you for joining us today. My name is Joe Weidman, and on behalf of the Sorbet Institute and the Association of U.S. Cyber Forces, I would like to welcome you to the fourth in our workshop series on supporting those entering the cyber workforce. Today, we are focusing on the power of connections and networking in, um, in your career. Last week, we had an amazing conversation on continuing education. And before that, we talked about resume writing and the interview process. So all of those events are available on our YouTube page and on our website for replay. We have links to each of the decks that we used with those events on our event page. So you can find all of that there. Um, our uh, job fair is going to be on June 14th, and I am so excited to let you know that uh, Texas Workforce Solutions of North Central Texas is partnering with us and they are hosting our virtual job fair for us. It is going to be an absolutely amazing event. I had a conversation with them yesterday and got to see the platform and um, we are working on getting those registration links live so that we can push those out both to our employers and to our job seekers so that we can um, get registered for that event. So watch your email because if you've registered for this event, we will be pushing it out. If you haven't registered for this event, you're watching us on our YouTube channel, check out our events page at tutorbreda.org forward slash events, and you can find our job there and you will be able to have access to those links. They should be live next week. Our format today will be an interactive one. Um, please use the chat throughout the event. As we go through, we have some questions and uh, to keep the conversation going, but um, please put questions in the chat if you'd like, and we plan on saving about 15 minutes at the end of the event for you to come off mics and ask questions um, as we go through. Now, I am so excited to present our amazing panel today. Um, Jessica, will you kick us off with an introduction? Absolutely. So I am Jessica Gulick. I'm the founder and CEO of Cat's Eye. We lead two major initiatives in the community. One is Play Cyber, um, and uh, uh, the other is the U.S. Cyber Games. So super excited to be here today. A little bit about myself. I've got about 20 years in cybersecurity and seven years running my own company. I totally get networking and how hard it can be at times. So looking forward to today's conversation. Excellent. Mike? Hi, I'm Mike Crandall. I'm the founder and CEO of Digital Beachhead. We provide cyber risk management to small to mid-sized companies, specifically those working within the defense industry. As I'm a retired uh, Air Force guy, did 21 years in the Air Force doing cyber and have been out now for 13 years doing it on my own. Awesome. Jose? Hello, everyone. My name is Jose Fernandez. I am the president and owner of CompSec Direct. I am also the Director of Recruitment for the AUSCF, or the Association of U.S. Cyber Forces. Um, I am a veteran. I have been um, probably working within the cybersecurity space for a little bit over 20 years now, before we were even calling it that. And I'm really excited to share some insight today to my experiences of uh, how networking benefited my transition out of the military and how that helps uh, me uh, like stay current and perform business development uh, in my professional career. Um, thank you. Olivia, you're muted. Good morning. I'm Olivia Hereford and I have a couple of affiliations. I am a program lead for Next Gen Cyber Talent and a project lead for the uh, projects going on in the Bay Area Community College Consortium. I've spent the last uh, 10 years in workforce development and career education in the community college system, primarily focusing on uh, uh, careers in ICT and digital media. And before that, well, I spent most of my career in tech, um, various working for hardware and software companies. And I have a really, I have a passion around diversifying our workforce. Um, wonderful. Thank you so much um, to each of you for being here. Um, I want to go ahead and share my screen. So we will, uh, I'll make this deck available towards the end of the, the uh, event today in the chat. Um, but we have our speakers listed in here and their LinkedIn profiles are connected to, uh, to this. But we'll go ahead and jump in and talk about the power of connections. Um, so let's talk about 
how valuable are relationships and connections in building out your cyber career? Who wants to start? <laughs> Mike, go ahead. Uh, I would say uh, what I learned when I was in the military, I used to consider myself Radar O'Reilly. And, you know, we had the horse trade to get things done. So I would get something from you that I could then give to Jessica, that they could then give to Jose. And then eventually I got what I needed. So I learned early on that networking is how we got things done. And specifically in a cyber world, um, everyone's looking for what certifications you have, what education you have, but a lot of it still boils down to, I know Jill, I saw what she did. She's worked with me or I know where she's worked. And that kind of opens that door. Um, and it's just getting your name out there. So I put a lot of value on you know, who you know, how you know them, how, how we're all interconnected, uh, using LinkedIn very much for that. I'd actually build on what Mike said. Um, <laughs> no, no, no intelligence here. Let me repeat somebody who's very smart that told me something early in my career. Um, and I remember it shocked everybody. He like brought everybody into the room and he was giving advice and, and leadership advice, et cetera. And he said, when you look at where you're spending your time during the day, um, you need to be spending 40% of it making relationships and and uh, networking. Now, given I was working a gov job at the time, um, but his point was that as we look at, you always hear that seniors should be able to do it faster, right? If you've got a senior engineer, a senior product manager, a senior role, you should be able to do things faster. It's not always because they know what they're doing, which is a significant portion of it. They could just get it going and know how to do it. And they've got the bruises to know how to do it efficiently, but they know who to go to to get help. That's kind of critical. So when you look at the value of networking, um, what the gentleman was trying to provide in terms of leadership to us is that um, by investing time in networking, you can actually be more efficient with how you get things done later on in your career. So when you wanna make a big impact, you don't do it with a single individual you collaborate and to be able to collaborate, you've got to have those relationships to build on. You know, I would, add, I would add that it's a life practice. Uh, all of, all of your, the, the positive and, and, and productive things that happen in your life, if you think about it, uh, it's because of someone you ran into or introduced to. And it's, 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 so it's not only about your, your, your career, it's also for your, for your personal success and development. And if you look at it that way, it makes it easier to practice because it's just a way of being, of making these connections, appreciating these connections and, and uh, you know, nurturing them. So. Jose? I mean, there's, there's really nothing more left to, to be said here. I mean, it, it's been covered very well. Um, we, we're, we belong to a society. We absolutely have to network to, uh, to not only like coexist with each other, but to uh, progress uh, throughout our lives. Uh, I found that um, devoting a lot of my time into like technical pursuits is, is useful. But when it came down to um, either making new business connections or going into that new like work situation, it was primarily based off my networking skills and not so much about what I'd done or what I'd accomplished technically. So um, yeah, I, I, think it's, it's, I think it's been pretty well covered by the, the other panelists. I appreciate that, thank you. So when you look at networking, what are the best ways to, to get started? Is it those individual connections that you're making or is it joining associations or organizations? What are, what are the best ways to to meet and network? I'd like to start if, if that's okay. Please. Well, you know, in my case, I, I joined like different like technical groups at first. Uh, so I'd heard of associations like ESA and ACM. And uh, I joined these technical groups, but I found that the, the type of networking that occurred there was primarily more technical. So it was like people within uh, maybe a same like affiliation to like a technology or a product or uh, people local to me that were like part of these chapters. And I thought that was pretty, it was a good start for me uh, to go into these groups. Uh, while, while I was in service, I wasn't really afforded 
too many opportunities to go out and socialize because it was a little bit discouraged based off the like, situation that I was in. But uh, as I started to transition out, I realized that um, you know I need to start communicating and, and joining some of these groups. So ESA and ACM were really good places. Uh, I started going to like different meetups in my community. Uh, those also really good for, for networking and just meeting other people. Um, for, for me, what, what really helped me uh, progress both technically and in the networking space was uh, attending Capture the Flag events or CTFs. At one point, uh, I looked back at all the CTFs that I'd done and I'd already participated in probably like 25 like CTFs. And based on my participation in one of them, that opened up opportunities for me uh, work-wise as I transitioned out of the military. Uh, had I not attended those uh, Capture the Flag events, I would have been stuck in that situation where I'm trying to submit my resume, I'm trying to get some of my peers to, to maybe help me out and put in a good word for me. But uh, uh, events like those like really help me uh, not only meet new people, but also understand what other people, uh, what their pursuits were and what their interests were, try to find some common ground. Nice, nice. I think Jessica, maybe can I get you to chime in because you know, with like the US cyber games and stuff like that, that seems like that kind of, you know, falls in with that whole capture the flag type thing that Jose was talking about. What are your thoughts on on different ways to meet up in like organizations versus individual? Absolutely. And let the record show I did not pay Jose to say <laughs> that, not with chocolate bars or anything. Um, so uh, no, it's it's a fantastic story, and he's right. Uh, getting into games, many times the games are are provide a networking environment or a team environment that allows you to meet others. I, I think what I would add and kind of take a different slant is uh, to build off of what he said. Um, when you're opening up and when you're just getting started, networking needs to happen at several different layers. So definitely you want to schedule meetups with people that you've connected with previously but haven't talked to in a while and just kind of reinvigorate those relationships. You want to look at the in-person conferences and meetups that you can go to to meet new people. Um, but you also want to look online. Um, you want to be part of the discussion in the community, whether it's in Discord or Slack or Twitter, um, wherever you can that's talking about um, cybersecurity and be part of that community of interest and um, contribute your thoughts, your ideas, your research as part of that. I think that's important. But I think the number one most important thing is to have a mindset of being approachable. So we talk a lot about when you're getting into cyber, which events and associations to go to or which games to play. Those are things you can do. There's a state of mind that kind of opens yourself up and just be approachable. And you'll see this oftentimes with, again, experts in the field and seniors who've done this a couple of times. When they start looking at their next step, you'll see them post on the LinkedIn or say something about, hey, here's an update on where my life is. I'm gonna be reaching out and reconnecting with people now that I'm looking at the next stage. Um, and that makes them approachable, right? Um, same thing when you go into a party, an event, a cocktail, uh, making sure that you're remaining approachable. You're not you know, standing against the wall that you're actually working the room. And what I mean by that is be confident and fearless enough to walk up. And if I see Mike and Jose talking, you know, I'll generally walk up to them and say, hi, mind if I step in? I'd love to meet you guys. Um, and then I'll introduce myself. And I think just taking that one step really kind of helps people get more engaged and start to meet people. You never know what the connections can be. Um, to begin with, they might not seem like it's a direct connect for what you're looking for that particular day. But a year, two years down the road, you might think about who you met um, on a webinar such as this and said, hey, I could really use their advice. Maybe I'll just see if I can get five minute talk on the phone with them to, to touch base. But be approachable. Definitely look at online ways to network, not just in person. And, and Jill, I like to take uh, one to two calls a week, totally unrelated to set taking like future business or anything else. It's people that I find on LinkedIn that might be running a company I find interesting. So I just take the call, set up a 15, 20 minutes to uh, get out there and see people. You never know how the circles will connect at some point. And 
to the point of the power of connections, how did we make it here as panelists? We reached out, we talked to people, and eventually our circles meet. And then even as panelists, I've met other people who are other panelists. So it's uh, always growing a step at a time. Don't don't get weighted down into the, oh my God, there's so many connections out there and how do I do it? You know, you eat the elephant one bite at a time. So start taking a bite. Olivia? Well, you know, I, I agree with Jessica when she says that there's networking at, at multiple levels. And, and recently my networking has been about creating opportunities for networking. Uh, so I, I tend to start with associations uh, and again, I'm not there is primarily so much for the, uh, the, the technical networking connections, but the relationships uh, that would uh, allow me to uh, connect, you know, our skill builders and, uh, you know, people that are pursuing careers in our programs, either at the colleges or at NextGen to present, get them into opportunities where they can network and, and meet some potential employers. But it all starts with the same basic um, approach. And that is inter introductions, asking questions, being confident, uh, even though you might not always feel that way. <laughs> but you know, confidence is always the great, best competition, as I say. And let's talk about you know, virtual versus in-person, because we've seen a huge shift in the way we network over the last couple of years with you know, where technology has shifted, just the world around us has shifted. Um, and we're starting to see a mix back towards both in-person and virtual. What are your thoughts on best ways to connect in, in both worlds? Who's gonna jump in there? I, I don't mind jumping in. Um, I just taken a second to put a chat in there. One of the first things that you can do is when you go to a webinar like this or any major meeting where um, there's like four o'clock, five o'clock, you know, networking sessions that you can take part in is to introduce yourself. Now, I did a quick one, which is connect with me and I gave my LinkedIn address. You really should say a couple of words. Hey, I'm, I'm Jessica. You know, I'm coming from Virginia. I'm uh, passionate about cyber as a sport and I, you know, run a company called Cat's Eye. Uh, that has a couple of initiatives on cyber games, right? Something short that you can put in to the chat field to get people, again, you're making yourself approachable. The fact that you're putting something out there in chat for everybody to see signals to everybody, you want them to approach you, you want them to connect with you. And, and so I think that's important. I think commenting on blogs um, or, you know, quoting constructively on, on Twitter and some of the social uh, LinkedIn kind of things, I think that helps too. Yeah, I was. I would piggyback on that and say, uh, I tell, I teach at university at night doing cyber boot camps, and I tell all the students, you know, you don't necessarily have to have the greatest of inputs when you're commenting, but even the wow, that was really interesting. You know, you're getting your name out there. People are going to see the name eventually. You you don't know how or who will pick that up and click on the link to look at you and read more about yourself. Um, always being willing to, as Jessica said, walk up. Uh, I agree with Olivia. Sometimes we don't feel the courage, but we have to fake it till we make it and just go up and say hello. Um, you know, sadly, uh, people think I'm a super extrovert, but really that extrovert is just the cover for the shy kid inside. So I cover that up by being overly extroverted. So um, taking the time and reaching out. Don't be afraid, you know, drop a comment here and there, be visible. Mm -hmm. I feel the same way, Mike, like uh, even though like I'm, I'm very outgoing and uh, you know, sometimes like I, I, I appear to be like extremely friendly and you know, personable, uh, it, I have to draw a lot of myself out in order for me to like do that. I almost have to force myself. Yep. Um, and then sometimes, yeah, for like in-person events, it's a, uh, sometimes it, it's a lot harder, especially if you don't know anybody, like, you know, in my case, like I don't drink. So uh, just going to like social mixers like that, it's like, it, it takes me, it takes me longer sometimes to uh, 
reach out and actually touch the talk to somebody that I don't know. But I, I basically obligate myself. Like I, I put myself in those situations on purpose. And I always try to be, you know, very friendly and um, with everybody that I meet also. So when we started transitioning to like virtual events, like especially during pandemic, uh, that that type of like engagement was was now a lot different because I couldn't just reach out and, you know, shake somebody's hand or, you know, like laugh with them. Uh, so, so that was for me, it was uh, it was a, it was really different. Um, like the, the way that we communicate over social media, sometimes it has to be, uh, you have to be very articulate and precise because uh, the internet is, is extremely unforgiving and you have to just kind of like make sure that what you're communicating and what you're putting out there uh, represents the best of you sometimes. And, and, and that could be a challenge sometimes for people. You know, and one of the, the, the good things about this technology, Zoom, we were able to at least be able, at least those of us that were part of organizations that continued or, or th we even did summer camps virtually uh, in, in during the pandemic. But one of the things that I noticed uh, uh, is that often uh, people coming into these environments would not turn their cameras on. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, all you see is, a, is, I mean, we can't connect with letters. We can connect with a face. We can connect with an avatar. And if you want to leave an impression and know that people know, remember that you were there, in addition to putting your LinkedIn information in chat, they can remember a face or an avatar. And, that, and a lot of times I'm dealing with, with students and they're, you know, they're, Again, they're building their confidence up, et cetera. But that is one of the things that I would I was encouraging <laughs> during that time is, you know, let us know a little bit by who you are, by the image that you put on the screen. I have one go back, if you don't mind, and that, that goes to what everybody has said. And that is networking takes prep preparation, right? Um, to a certain extent, we all think it's natural and that you're just going to show up and, and do it. Uh, but you need to take the time, particularly when it matters, um, to do the preparation, know who's speaking, know who's going to be in the room that you're interested in. And if there's somebody there that you really want to meet with because they work at a company that you're interested in or something to that degree, make sure that you're making an effort when you're there to, you know, what they look like, you go find them, introduce yourself. If you don't, then you, you know, reach out to the hostess or whoever invited you and say, I'd really like to meet this person. Could you let me know if, when they arrive so that I can introduce myself or if it's electronic and it's virtual and you know, um, so I have an, another webinar that I'm gonna be listening to this week that I'm very interested in making the connections. I've already reached out to the speakers via LinkedIn and said, I'm really looking forward to your talk. Um, and I just wanted to introduce myself. And then probably afterwards, I'll go back and say something interesting about what they said that um, I'd love to you know, network further with them on. So I think it's about making an effort I want to join in the kind of conversation. Olivia, I don't know where you stand, but Jose and Mike, I'm an introvert. People always find that weird because generally speaking, I have a lot of energy and I'm out there just like Mike is, um, but it wears me out. So you, if we're at a conference and you see, you'll see me sometimes like in it, right? And then you'll see me on the side, just tell you, taking a moment, <laughs> you know, I need to introvert time just to recalibrate and then I'll get back into the action. And um you know, that's okay. And so to all those people that are listening that are introverts, it really is, it's an effort that you make and it can feel kind of like faking it to begin with, but it does come natural after a while. It does take a lot out of you though. I think it's great that um, several of y'all have commented that you're an introvert and, and you've got to push yourself. Um, I find that I've had to do the same thing and I found myself going to like, I'll go to like, community events and stuff like that just locally and with like farmers markets and stuff like that and force myself to go talk to people just to get used to talking to strangers and and making that approach in kind of a safe environment or whatever because because I struggle to to introduce myself and, and step away from being that wallflower um, and I found that that's a really great way for for me to, to learn to interact with people that are strangers is to go out and find a community event or something like that and just force myself to go practice before I get into those situations, um, like networking events and stuff where, where I have to engage because then I have more confidence when I go into 
um, those those engagements that are much more important to me than you know mm -hmm. who I'm buying my produce from. <laughs> awesome. Um, let's shift uh, thoughts just a little bit. Let's talk about mentor relationships because I think in networking, um, mentorships can be really important as well. Do y'all find benefits in them? You know, um, how do you find a good mentor? And, and, you know, cyber, there's so many different areas of cyber. Is it important for you to find somebody who is like directly in your field or are you just, what are you looking for out of a mentor? Olivia, I'm going to start with you on this one. I still have mentors, always have. And um, what I look for in a, in a mentor is uh, someone that uh, can be uh, a sounding board that will listen to me. Um, and um, sometimes that's all they do is listen. <laughs> uh, but also, I, you know, give me some guidance on goals and uh, ideas that I have where I may be unsure about, unsure about. And it's not, my, men, the, my, my mentors are mostly around my own personal development, though I do have uh, one that I go to relative to the cybersecurity field. So there are a lot of benefits. I think I've, I've learned a lot from my mentors. In fact, you know, one of the, I was reading someplace that of, of the way that we accumulate our knowledge uh, and skills, 20% of it comes from people and relationships that we have, not so much, uh, you know, uh, going to school or the training that we get. It comes from people, that wisdom comes from people. Jessica? Um, I take a, a little slant on it. I know we always talk about mentorships. Um, within the Women's Society of Cyber Jitsu, Mary Galloway, who's the CEO, she often talks about creating a tribe, if you will, some uh, a group of folks to surround yourself with. And I love that concept because um, the mentorship piece of it always makes me think like they're teaching you something or helping you. I prefer the environments where it's like mentor to mentor if you will, um, where we can help each other. And I have found that um, I can learn from anybody, honestly. I can learn from my kids. Um, I can learn from uh, uh, authors and, um, you know, and from my friends and from my colleagues. So in terms of mentorship, what I typically do is try to create your own advisory board. We always talk about how important advisory boards are for companies right? Um, it's important for you personally, think of yourself as a business, you have value, you have services, you have expertise, and that you need an advisory board. And so when you build your tribe or your advisory board, make sure to have it in different areas. So certainly you want somebody technical, particularly if you're technically driven, right? Um, but as a entrepreneur and CEO, I need people that can help me with how do I handle financial crisis, right? How do I handle um, hiring and firing and resource planning. But I also need, how do I deal with protocol issues? Or how do I better network so I can be in the right circles, if you will? So there's different things that I need when I bring my tribe together. And just like Olivia said, I mean, there are certain people that are your go-tos that over time you have a relationship. Um, but I, I think the best mentorship relationships are two-way. Um, I feel like when they're one way, there's too much pressure. I mean, I love formal mentoring programs. If you can get yourself into it, by all means, go ahead and do it. Um, there's a lot of pressure on women to mentor. And the problem with that is there is an expectation that I'm going to put together a plan. I'm going to spend all this time. I'm going to give all this energy to you. And it, it's just a lot to ask from people. But when you have that give and take um, and you're more of an advisory board and more um, relaxed and you just touch base, I think that's really important. Um, one of the most uh, important things, I think Mike, you said it earlier, was meeting new people every week. I have a couple of go-to CEOs, right? Fellow CTOs, I meet with on a monthly basis. Some people I just like, they they build me up. They I love to even hear about their problems because it's interesting to me how they solve them. And those people I meet with, you know, every month, every other month, just to, just to um, talk stuff with, you know, and catch up. What are you dealing with? How are you, you know, what's going on in your world? And that provides me some of the most valuable mentorship. And it's kind of a different way of looking at it. Love that. I really struggle with this one. 
because um, I can't recall a single point in my life where, where I ever approached somebody and, and asked them to be my mentor. Uh, what I instead, you know, as I reflect upon, you know, everything that's happened in my life, uh, there's basically, I've, I've had a lot of mentorship from people, uh, I guess, indirectly from just being, uh, you know, within like close association to the certain groups or, or people, but there is a big difference between what is a peer and what is a mentor. And uh, I found myself that, you know, I, I help my peers out as much as I can. And, and at one point, uh, not so long ago, somebody reached out to me to, to be their mentor. And uh, I tried, you know, communicating with them, uh, but it really seemed that the uh, expectation was, was really more for me to just give them my time. And, you know, uh, Jessica, you, you kind of nailed it on the head when you said it has to kind of like be like mutual because it, it really seemed like this person was just abusing the relationship for, for me to just uh, like help them to do work that they just weren't willing to do themselves. Um, what I did also find was that uh, those people, particularly in the, in the military, you get a lot of mentorship from, from good leaders within the military. In private sector, not so much. Uh, unless you have um, like a really good relationship with, with like certain people, uh, you, you, your mileage may definitely vary. Because especially be wary and uh, be wary of people that come to you and say, I want to be your mentor. Because uh, I don't think that's ever naturally occurred in any conversation that I've had and from what I hear from other people is that it usually um, ends up being not such a great experience. Yeah, I'll piggyback on that. I, I look at mentorship as like a 360 thing. Um, and, and it is more a learning relationship up, down, left and right. You know, you, you always are learning. And whether it's a formal mentorship, you know, to Jose's point, hi, will you be my mentor? or whether it is, I'm just going to learn from you and I'm going to talk to you. So to me, it's going right back to that networking, but you're networking internally, you know? So I would say, always keep your eyes open, eyes and ears open. Um, and what I mean by that is I've had good supervisors, bad supervisors, you know, good bosses, bad bosses, but I've learned from both. The good ones kind of helped me and I learn all the positive traits and the bad ones, I can say, I am never going to do that again. You know, that that won't be me. And so whether that mentorship was directly, you know, given, it was taken. I was taking that mentorship on and, and learning the, the positive things and the negative things to do. So I would say uh, to almost everybody's point, the mentorship is just a learning experience and learn where you can connect how you can. And uh, that can be a 360 angle. Don't think of it as just up or down. It's left and right as well with your peers. I'd like to put a positive slant on, on some of this because I think what y'all are hearing from all of us, and, and I share what Jose and, and Mike have said, um, there have been good experience and bad experiences. But if you're just getting into cyber, keep in mind it's totally okay to email somebody who you want to chat with that has a job that you like. Just be very specific with them. Don't approach them, hey, will you mentor me? That has so ambiguous, it's so it's so loaded, if you will. But if you just say, hey, can we grab 15 minutes on a call? I'd love to pick your brain about the current job you have. Um, that's specific, right? And that is is perfect. Some people call that a mentoring moment, right? Um, and, and I like that concept of being, hey, can can we help? And then once you have that conversation, if there's a mutual like, right? If there's some 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 energy there. Oftentimes I'll say to the individual after the 15 minute call, hey, you know what? You sound really super interesting. And I love what you're doing. Will you touch base with me in a couple of months? Let me know how this ends up, right? And, and that's how the relationship starts to work. Uh, but don't put so much pressure on them to begin with, will you mentor me? Um, I think it's just a matter of, will you have a, a cup of coffee with me or a 15 minute chat? Or could I pick your brain on this? I think that's how you can really open the door and you should, right? Because it does help you network. We're just saying that the whole 
um, traditional perspective of I'm going to spend months and hours with you is a little too much when you don't know somebody, unless you're part of a formal program. I love that. I love that. Um, I when I think back on on mentors that I've had in my career um, and in my life, it it has been that it started in that manner where we were just having a conversation and and over time those conversations developed and and the friendship developed and I was able to um, to, to have that trusted advisor to go to with different questions and stuff throughout my career just to get different perspectives. So I love that. And I love, I love your, your thought on, on creating a tribe, Jessica, um, because we, we, we need different things from different people. No one person can serve to, to advise you in every aspect of what you may have going on. And so having, having a tribe of different people that you can reach out to just to have conversations with and, and to talk through different situations is powerful. Um, so let's talk about different places where you can connect. We've kind of touched on this a little bit, whether it's LinkedIn or, or whatever, but, you know, let's be a little bit more um, specific in, you know, different areas. You know, there's um, volunteering, um, you know, Jose, you volunteer with AUSCF to support them in their um, membership and, and the program. Um, obviously, I'm Part of the Tutorial Brand Institute, and we have task forces in different areas that we work, and I've gotten to work with several of y'all through that um, within the community conferences. Let, let's just kind of talk about different ways to network, and where are your favorite places and ways to to network? Anywhere and everywhere. <laughs> I thought you were going to say with chocolate. <laughs> and, and, with, and with the chocolate VPN tunnels we were discussing earlier. Um, Honestly, uh, I volunteer as a, I'm the, currently the vice president of the information system security agency, the ISA in our, uh, in our city. Um, try to join task forces, you know, like this one. Um, but really, any chance I can get, we hold the first Friday in, in Colorado Springs where all the cyber people get together at the National Cyber Center. So it's an in-person meet and greet. Uh, we do the looking for job, hiring for job buttons, so that way we can help us interact. But there's no, not really any really wrong way to try to connect. So, you know, I, I definitely say it's get out there into uh, not only our arena, I found that I'm now trying to get out into other arenas, going to business conferences versus just the cyber conferences. Um, because cyber needs to be spoken to those folks. So instead of speaking to our peers, I'm trying to speak to our, you know, the people who need to hear and understand. So get the word out. But you never know. You, the connections you make today may not do anything for you in that immediacy, but you don't know that pebble in the pond and how it's going to connect later on. So be brave, get out there, start talking to people. So uh, I think I'll go. Uh, volunteering has uh, is probably the most interesting way that I've been able to network. Mm -hmm. I would have never in a million years thought that volunteering would have led to like um, not only like personal growth, but business development. I would have never imagined that, but it does happen. Uh, one of the first things I started doing was I started volunteering with the Military Cyber Professionals Association or MCPA. And they were doing like outreach events for uh, veterans that were in transition. So veterans that are transitioning out of the military and into uh, back into the private sector. Um, I was able to meet some really amazing and outstanding people that I still talk to. Uh, the socials that uh, organizations like MCPA would do um, while we were doing like more in-person events before pandemic were uh, amazing, like uh, business development and just, just networking with professionals within my local area. Now, when it comes to preference, uh, I like the, the cheap events. I like the events that are free. 
I, I don't like to pay for like business mixers. I, I feel that sometimes I, I get very diminished value attending venues like that. Um, sometimes they do that on purpose to just, you know, just keep the amount of people down to, you know, people that are willing to like commit to, um, to that type of like financial activity. But at the same time, uh, things that are cheap, things that are after hours, uh, usually things that involve food a must. <laughs> I've been to I've been to a few of these where it's just it, it's just honestly a little bit depressing, and there there isn't somebody there to like you know uh, like motivate everybody and and make it entertaining and fun. So th those can be pretty lame sometimes. Uh, but AUSCF um, definitely like uh, the the one that uh, that I'm trying to like help grow right now is uh it's also a really good place where i've been able to uh like um, perform things that are related more towards like social impact and actually accomplishing you know change as, as it pertains to legislation that affects cybersecurity policies and the warfighter uh, doing ctfs is a commitment like you can just show up to ctfs and have a good time you don't have to actually like place first on these things you get a lot of it is so much fun to just uh, do like a group thing like i always make like awkward intros to, to like people hey can i be part of your group i know you don't know me but you know i do that and i i don't tell people who i am it's like oh i i just go you know just try to be very humble uh so <laughs> those those can lead to like very fulfilling like life experiences too Absolutely. I, I, I second that. Um, obviously, a uh, big supporter of games. We have our Play Cyber Global League, which is free right now. And what we're trying to do is really create a community of gamers, right? And this, uh, quite a few are newbies. And so we do like game hours, where once a month we'll provide, let's say, five to seven challenges, but we all get in the same Discord channel and we talk through while, we'll do, while we're doing it. It's not a tournament. It's just, hey, let me, how to how do I figure this out and laugh and giggle and talk to people. And we found this works really well. Um, we hold a program every year called Wicked Six. Um, you can find out wickedsix.com. It's a women's program. It's what we call a 24 hack and chat, 24 hours of uh, playing on uh, CTF games and chatting with other women from around the world. And then we have speakers as well, which is fantastic. But we try to provide this environment where um, the women feel comfortable and can just test out games and really kind of grab a glass of wine or a cup of coffee or or something. And I've never done this before, but let's do it together, you know, kind of thing and laugh and, and share ideas. And it works out really well. I think that regardless of the places where you connect, start first where you feel the most comfortable, right? Um, and for me growing up in cyber, um, I went to a lot of these things because I was required to for work purposes. Um, when I was just starting out, but where I learned to really network was when I went to my very first women's conference. Um, it was actually women in IT. And I've seen this at um, Executive Women's Forum and at the Women's Society of Cyber Jitsu. Women do something a little different on networking. It's their body behavior. It makes you feel more comfortable. So if I start to approach a group of women, you'll notice that their feet, they'll move their feet to open up the circle so I can step in right, which really kind of gives me the confidence to, to be part of that conversation, they make room. And so now when I go to events, I try to do the same thing if somebody is walking up or if I'm standing, you know, uh, you know, I, I was young, so forgive me, but we all do this, you know, where you're like checking your phone and you're like, you know, three feet from the circle, but you don't have confidence to get to the circle of folks. They would say, hey, who are you? And they bring me in. And I just felt that that was my place, my personal place of comfort. Yours might be a technical gathering um, or a place where like uh, an, another association's chapter meeting, something small, but start where you feel confident and then build your skills out as, as you go. Um, I think these are wonderful. I think webinars, I think you're seeing a lot of more virtual meetups as well um, that can be comfortable. Um, what I've also noticed is now the pandemic's over, I don't know about you guys, but I have to train myself to, yes, you really have to get in the car and go somewhere, right, and get out of the house. And so it's like pushing myself out there, but then once I get there, I enjoy it um, more so now than I did pre-pandemic, 
because now I really value it and I'm present, right? Whereas before I'd be like, yeah, I'll get some work done while I'm at that conference. Now I'm like, I'm going to be off. I'm going to a conference. I'm focusing in. And so I'm present and you get more value out of that. Um, the other thing that we haven't talked about with these connections in places, you don't have to go alone. You don't have to go alone. You can bring a wingman or woman. And I think that helps as well. I love that. You know, I would add just finally that uh, there is a, 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 through all of these, all of, all of the above, uh, there's a thread of volunteerism, of being of service. I mean, conferences like B-sides are primarily driven by volunteers. There's an opportunity there to not only learn, but to make those connections, working in your community task forces. Those are all opportunities that were, that are looking for people to that are willing to volunteer. And then in turn, you can make, make those connections. You know, and I'll just, just share a really short story. When I was, you know, getting my consulting practice uh, up and started in, in the late 90s, I would get freaked out between gigs. You know, oh, when, 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 when am I gonna get my next gig? And what I learned was, is that I'll just volunteer my services someplace. Okay. And through that, it was amazing the connections that I made. And sure enough, as soon as the last gig finished, I had an opportunity in the wings for the next one. And it was because I assuaged my fears and concerns about not, not having work by going to volunteer. It was, it's, it, and I've, I've learned that, and that's the advice that I give a lot of my career seekers is that, you know, share your, share, share your gifts where you can, and then you will attract um, your next opportunities. I love that, love that. Um, so we, the, the remainder slides in this are information on different organizations and uh, places where you can um, learn more or connect. Um, so please check it out. I've dropped the link to this presentation into, um, into the event, but I'd like to stop sharing and open it up for any questions. Feel free to come off mute if you. I know Vincent is not working. <laughs> Trying to. <laughs> if I might ask Vincent, what places are you going to that uh, you found have been helpful? Uh, well, I'm still going through my uh, cybersecurity boot camp so i've been working on my linkedin profile and posting my badges and um trying to figure out github to post my schoolwork. so um i've been trying to network with some of my instructors like mike and some of the instructors we had for our courses right now so yeah let us know what we can do to help thank you i will Well, do we have any final pieces of advice as we wrap up this event? I would say always move forward. Always move forward. I would say um, plan your story. In other words, practice it and pitch it on who you are. So when you introduce yourself, make it less than 30 seconds. Um, but uh, plan telling your story the way you want to tell it. Because I think that's where a lot of people kind of like, oh man, how do I introduce myself? You kind of plan it. It kind of gives you more confidence. And so uh, I plan some things that's called like the elevator pitch. And you know that works sometimes if you're doing like business development, but if you're just meeting people, just, just try to keep it very, very informal, keep it casual. Because if not, if you make it too awkward, people, you're just going to scare people off. <laughs> <laughs> but you want to be interesting. You want to be interesting. So if I say, you know, I'm, I'm all about cyber sports and I'm talking to Jose, he knows what to engage me on, right? It's not about telling my life story when he says, who are you and what, what do you do? Well, you know, back in high school, you know, I, that's what I mean is, you know, having kind of, how are you going to describe yourself planned out before you go to the event? And you can change it up. Olivia, you've got to have had multiple personalities at different events. I know I've done it. 
<laughs> yes. And so you do have to have your story. And the other thing too, is that the people that you're talking to, they've got one too. So what you ask them, you know, what would you share with me? Tell me about yourself. You can do the same thing. And then that will give you the cue. Like, again, we talked about mentoring. It's all two way. It's all two way. That is such a good point. Be prepared to listen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some people really just, you know, either they spend too much time talking about themselves, but you can, you can learn so much more about like people and it will help you grow just by listening and just being a good listener sometimes. I'm glad that you brought that up. I think that's a great point because especially if you're an introvert and you struggle to meet people, asking questions and letting other people talk can can bring you a sense of comfort as you listen to what they're saying you can find that connection that kind of opens you up and helps you to be more comfortable and engaging so um go in with some questions in your pocket that you can ask people as you go around and engage perfect thank you so much for uh spending time with us today at our networking event uh jessica jose olivia and mike thank you so much for um, sharing your experience and your um, tips with us on the power and benefits and best practices of networking. Um, we appreciate y'all so much. Please make sure that you check us out on at the tutorialbreader.org and uh, auscf.org. And we look forward to connecting with y'all at our job fair on June 14th. So be on the lookout um, from your email or check out our events page for links to register for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you.